their left hand. Put it out just like this. Now take your right hand, give yourself a high five. Congratulations to making it to the last presentation of the day. Good job. Now, your hands should be empty still, and while I have your complete attention, I want to start this off with a simple trivia question. Okay? Is everybody ready to use their brain? Yes. Who can tell me what the most successful video game Nintendo ever released? Mario Kart. We got Mario Kart. What else? Mario Brothers. Zelda. Kong. Pong. Kong. I heard it. Somebody said it. Zelda. The Legend of Zelda. This amazing video game that was released back in 1986 by Nintendo was the top money producing game that they ever released. Still to this day, over 75 million copies of this game were sold. Now, if you've never heard of The Legend of Zelda, or if you've never played it, this was a role play game where the goal was to rescue the stunning Princess Zelda from the evil Ganon. And to do that, you had to take your character, his name was Zen Link, through different worlds and different levels, completing tasks and fighting battles. Now, this wasn't the type of game that you could rush through in a couple weeks or even a couple months. Playing The Legend of Zelda made me realize for the very first time how important it was to back something up. <laughs> Now, let's stay in 1986 for a moment, okay? Because those of us that remember the 80s, we love them, right? Yeah. I was just nine years old when this game came out. And I was completely obsessed. It's all I wanted to do. My friends were outside playing. I was inside playing Legend of Zelda. Now, The Legend of Zelda was powered by the first generation Nintendo system. Did anybody have that? It was super cool, right? I mean, this was the introduction of the Super Mario's franchise. We had cool games like Excite Bike. Yeah. And who remembers Duck Hunt? Yeah. Duck Hunt was my jam. I love that game. Now, back in 1986, the first generation Nintendo system was the cutting edge in home video game entertainment. But the system itself was a bit buggy. Remember that, right? If you remember, the game cartridges would get dusty and sometimes not load up, or they would just lock up in the middle of play. If you accidentally hit the game console or got excited and you pulled the controller too hard, it could reset the game or just freeze up. But my all-time favorite, which brought tears to my eyes many times, was when my mother used to just come in the room and shut the game off in the middle of play. <laughs> This is why it was so important to save your game progress often. Playing The Legend of Zelda was the first time I ever created a backup of something that was important to me. Okay? This is the actual save screen from the game. Notice the caution message directing you how to properly save so the data is not damaged. Cutting edge stuff right there, 1986. So there are three main reasons why having a backup and restore strategy is important. Reason number one, it saves you money. According to Fortune magazine, over $1.7 trillion is spent every year on data recovery. It's insane. Reason number two, it saves you time. Restoring lost data or design can take an enormous amount of time, right? And then reason number three, it shows how intelligent you are. This is an absolute fact, and I'm going to explain how. So imagine you are in a room with ten other website owners, and you are the only one in that room with a backup and restore strategy. You automatically are the smartest person in the room. It's true. How many people are in this talk right now because you do not currently have a backup or restore strategy? Don't be shy. 
I'm so glad you're here. And I guarantee you that by the end of this, you're going to be more intelligent than you were before my very first slide. You already know so much more about The Legend of Zelda, right? So we live in what I like to call a high-tech, low-touch world. And what I mean by that is the things that we depend on to complete our daily tasks require technology. And that technology is a collection of data specific to each one of us, right? Now, if that data gets lost or corrupted, it can completely wreak havoc on our lives, right? So some examples of this unique data that we depend on, that if lost or corrupted, would completely cripple us. What about email? Can you imagine? All your emails were just gone. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Suck at that one. What about your social media accounts? If they were just gone. A lot of people use social media to drive their business and drive their results. What if they were gone? What if they were hacked? What about your phone contacts? Yes, people still do use their phone to call other people. I haven't seen it, but I know it exists. If those contacts were gone, that would cripple you. What about text messages? How many people send more than 100 text messages a week? A day? Imagine if they were just gone. There's information in those messages that you need. What about your calendar systems? That would cripple you, right? What about some of the mobile apps that you depend on to get through the day? What about some work software that you need to manage and run your business? Are there any students in here? No students, one student. What about school assignments? One of my daughters is in eighth grade, and since about sixth grade, almost 80% of her school assignments are done online. So take a moment to look at this list and raise your hand if there are two or more things that you depend on every day. It's almost all of us. So with all this technology full of our specific data, that we need to survive, imagine some of the worst things that could happen. What if we lost our phone? I mean, we almost need to have a moment of silence just saying that, right? <laughs> what if our computer crashed or was lost or stolen? What if our website was infected and the design or the content was altered? What if our website was completely deleted? Scary stuff, right? But see, the goal here is to make sure that we are prepared for the worst. And doing that will ensure to limit our fears and our worries. Having a successful backup and restore strategy is absolutely critical to living a digital life of no worries. Right, would we agree on that? So let's get a little bit more specific, right? The title of this talk is Back Up Before You Crack Up. And I like to think of that as a movement, not just a topic. But what type of backup are we talking about? Are we talking about police backup? No, we're not. Are we talking about an emergency power supply backup? No, not at all. Are we talking about a wingman for a blind date? No. <laughs> what are we talking about? We're talking about website backup. And more specifically, WordPress website backup. What is a restore? Does anybody know what a restore is? What's a restore? It's Loud. It's when you restore your, you have a clone of your site and you put it back up. What so do you need to have a restore happen? Backup. What do you, yeah, yeah, backup. backup. That's why you need a backup and restore strategy. The defined approach to creating a successful backup and restore strategy can be broken up into three main actions. The first one is understanding 
how important it is. That's key. The second action is selecting the right tool to execute that strategy. And then the third and most important is to automate the process. Don't manage it, automate it, okay? Now throughout this presentation, you are gonna notice ground underlined text. And these are hand selected hyperlinks that I've used to take you off to more information as it pertains to this talk. The slides are available on this URL right now, but you don't have to mad dash, and we'll show this at the end. But if you do want to get that now, that's fine as well. All right. So Halloween is rapidly approaching, right? Now, in the spirit of this fun and festive holiday, I've set aside some time at the end of this talk to hear some of the horror stories that you have gone through when it comes to backing up and restoring WordPress. <laughs> I see some smiles out there, so I know there's some scary stories. So what I'd like for you to do now is think about those stories, and at the end, I would really like if you could share them with us, because it just reinforces the importance of this topic. Okay, so start thinking of those. All right, who is responsible for backing up your site? You are. I am? You are. Everybody fix it. We are. Yeah, we are. It's not WordPress.com. It's not the organizers of WordCamp. It's not your landlord. It's not the bank. You guys are responsible for backing up your site. Unless you're physically paying somebody to do it, or somebody is volunteering their time to do it for you, you're responsible for doing it. So take on that responsibility. What are some of the situations that you could find yourself in that would require you to have a backup and restore strategy? What are some of those situations? You could just call them out, scream them out loud. Getting hacked. Getting hacked, yep. Drive failure. Drive failure, so hardware failure, hmm. possible, yep. Coworkers with a WordPress login that like to tinker. Coworkers, yep. <laughs> the hoster goes bankrupt. That. Who goes bankrupt? The hoster. The host goes bankrupt? Yep. Did that happen to you? Oh gosh. I want to hear your story at the end. Wow. Theft. Theft? That's a good one. That's actually a good one. That wasn't on my list. Accident deleted. Accident deleted, yep. That go that kind of goes back to her topic, right? User error. Yeah, right? So these are just some of the, the things that we see often, right? Plug updates. Plug-in kills you. Absolutely. Core updates, theme updates, plug-in updates. You could potentially have a theme or plug-in conflict. And while you're trying to troubleshoot that conflict, you could end up making it worse. So creating a backup so you have a restore point will help with that situation. And you said infection. Happens often. The number one thing that uh, I see every day is user error. Absolutely, the number one reason why you should have a backup and restore strategy. I like the theft. Who said theft? That's a good one, yeah. That should be on there as well. So please take a moment to just read this slide and read it carefully. Let it sink in. When I was uh, 17 years old, I decided to leave school and start a carpet <coughs> installation business. Now, I was doing pretty good. I was making some decent money. In fact, I was making enough money that I could move out from my father's house, and I got a studio apartment on the north side of Buffalo, New York. Now, North Buffalo was not the worst area of the city, but it certainly was the suburbs. I had a work van that I used to haul job supplies and my tools. And every day when I'd come home from work, I'd take those tools out, and I'd bring them into the building I was staying in, and I'd put them in the basement in a locked area. They were much safer in the basement than in my van. Now, during this time period, I joined a networking organization so I could generate more referrals for my business and make more money. There was another member in the group that sold insurance. And one week, he was talking about renter's insurance. 
and how for a very little amount, somebody who rents could have peace of mind for all of their belongings. Now, I was sold. I signed up immediately. And literally, the day after my policy went into effect, the building I was staying into got broken into and the basement got emptied out. All my tools were gone. I was out of business. Now, fortunately, I had this renter's insurance policy. I was able to get some money to rent some tools, and within 30 days, I was reimbursed for the entire cost of my tools. You see, having a backup and restore strategy is very similar to having an insurance policy, right? Insurance is the protection for financial loss. Now, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need a backup file that does not exist, you are in a bad place, a really bad place. And I can't tell you how many times I see that. That's why I say this is a movement. It's not a topic. It is so important to back up your site. So I like to live a little dangerously. Who likes a little danger in their life? One person, two per Come on, guys. We're in the WordPress community. We love danger. For example. I'm not afraid to eat a massive meal and go swimming right after. I'm not afraid. I do it all the time. Don't care. I'm not afraid to wash my lights and my darks in the same load. I don't care. I do it. It's efficient. No fade. Look, no fade. It's efficient. I live, I live dangerously. I'm trying to tell you. I like to stand on the top step of the ladder. It's there. I'm going to use it. That's the highest point. I do it all the time. Love it. I feel empowered when I'm up there. And lastly, I like to do my updates on a live site. I said I like to live dangerously. But see, I can live dangerously because I have a good backup and restore strategy. I'm not afraid of the consequences. And I want to teach you guys to live a little dangerously as well today. Danger's fun. So there's different ways that you can complete a backup, right? What are some of the ways? Plug in. Plug in? Service. A service? Pay somebody to do it? HFTP download like. Do it manually? Yep. Automatic backups from your host. Automatic backups from your host. So we, that, we pretty much covered all four there. You can manually do it. Uh, I don't advise that, but in some situations, it is needed, and it is a successful way to back up your site. You can have your hosting company do it. Now, some hosting companies will include a daily backup option in the plan. Other hosting companies may charge a small fee to have daily backup run. You can pay somebody to do it. Very easy, right? And then the most common way is you can use a plugin to accomplish that, right? So let's talk about those plugins for a moment. There are tons of free and premium backup plugins out there. And they're amazing, right? And I would love to show you 100 slides highlighting all the features and benefits of each. But that would have no benefit at all to you. Instead, what I'd like to do is share with you one plugin that my team and I have used for many years without any issues. On all web hosts. On all, On web, all hosts. web hosts and all websites. Now, you guys have been kind enough to give me your attention this afternoon in hopes of learning something, right? You're not here for nothing. You want to learn something. And with that responsibility, I'm here to share experience with you. So I'm about to talk about a single plugin that will make your backup and restore strategy easy as apple pie. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. 
And even if you already have a backup and restore strategy, if there are pain points in it, I'm going to solve all that for you right now. Can anybody guess what plugin I might talk about? Don't use that because I already told you at lunch. Jetpack. Can anybody guess? Backup buddy? Nope. I'm not guessing. Updraft. Good guess. Usually it takes about four guesses. I like Updraft a lot. Ding, ding, ding. Who's using Updraft Plus? Ding, ding, ding. I gotta say it again. Updraft Plus is a backup and restore plugin that offers both a free version and a premium version. For the purpose of everything I've talked about today, the free version is more than sufficient. It has everything you need to complete a backup and restore strategy for your site. Now, a little side note and something I want to talk about that I like to call support, don't resort. And what I mean by this is if you are using a free plugin out there and you are happy with what it does for you, support the developer and spend some money on the premium. Don't resort to using the free version. Okay? Support, don't resort. These plugin developers are amazing individuals and they create these tools and these functions that enhance our WordPress experience. Let's give them a few pennies for it. Okay? Support, don't resort. Updraft Plus, over 1 million downloads at WordPress.org. Absolutely amazing backup plugin. Now, besides my personal opinion of it, and the experience I have with it over many years, there's actually three things that this plugin does that no other backup plugin in the world does. That's a pretty big statement, right? Now, I've personally researched these things, and they also advertise it on their site. The first thing that Updraft Plus does that no other backup plugin does is it offers automatic one-click restore. How many clicks? One. One. Within one click of your mouse, you can completely restore your entire sites or specific parts of your site. One click restore. The other thing that Updraft Plus does that no other backup plugin does is they offer automatic backups pre-update. And what I mean by that is if you have a theme update or some plugins that need to be updated or even core updates, Updraft Plus will run a full backup on those sections before the update begins. And this is awesome because if there's an issue after that update is completed, what can you do? How many clicks? One, one. one click to restore back, right? That's assuming your site is still alive. <laughs> That's assuming your site's still alive, correct. But if your site died, it died after the backup was yeah. completed. Oh, yeah. So there's yeah, other yeah, ways that you could get it back. Yeah, so At least you have that, that reference point. But he's right. You could get that white screen. The third thing that Updraft Plus does that no other backup plugin does is it backs up encrypted database information. Now, let me explain this one. This is not a very common thing in a WordPress installation. But in some situations, you may be working with a site that contains data that by law has to be encrypted. An example of this would be like medical records. Huge, huge thing, right? That data in the database must be encrypted. Updraft Plus is the only plugin that will back up encrypted database info. So we've talked a lot, I've talked a lot, about backing up, right, and restoring. But I haven't really dived in to what you need to back up, right? Back up, back up. So what? What exactly is it that you need to back up? Think for a moment of the human body. What are the two things in the human body that are absolutely necessary in order for you to live? A heart and a brain. A heart and a brain. You're brilliant. 
<laughs> the body cannot survive without those two things. It absolutely has to have those two things, right? Now, think of your website in the same way. What are the two things that are completely unique to your WordPress site? My login. Database and files. That's right. So the heart is your database. And this is the area of your site that stores all of the data and settings and it executes dynamically, right? This is unique to your site. This is the heart. And then the other, the brain of your site, is your content or your files. These are the things unique to your site. And in most cases, all of this content will be located in your WP content folder. In special circumstances, they may not, or some may be outside that folder. Now, a lot of people will say to me here, what about the core files? Don't you have to back those up? What, what do we think about that? Do we? Yes. No. Why do we have to back core files up? Say it loud and proud. Well, you have to have everything, but you don't have to have everything as much because it doesn't change. You, you have to back them up if you're stupid enough to make changes to them. Yeah, but you're not stupid though. Yeah. Right. So you're good. <laughs> the database and the content are unique, right? But WordPress core files, <coughs> these should never be altered. These should never be changed. And they exist going all the way back to, I don't know what the first version is. Does anybody know the first version? Is it 0 0.1? Is it 1.0? I don't know. But you can go back to WordPress.org and you can get any release that they've ever done. So why waste the space, the time, and the resources to back up something that's not unique and is totally available for you for free? So I don't back up core. Oh, Now, I did have to include this slide uh, because it, it's important that everybody understands my way is not the only way or the best way. It's simply what I have experience doing. There are many other backup plugins out there that are very powerful and can help you create a successful backup and restore strategy. And these are the, this is a short list of some free ones and some premium ones. Are there any other backup plugins or backup strategies that you use that are not on this list? <coughs> Dropbox? So, so Dropbox, the plugin Dropbox, is there a backup plugin? Okay. Because Dropbox itself is just a storage, but the plugin will back up and send it over to Dropbox. Okay? Say just plugins or strategies? Strategies. So I came to Beginner Day yesterday, and before I left, I started FTP downloading everything. And I, my voice said it's still going, so I, I do that. Okay. But so you I, manually do it? Yeah, but um, I've got like a horrible host, and I'm getting ready to migrate to another hosting. So I'm downloading manually through files of it. Everything that's on on the server. Uh, a lot, tons of sites. Three like sites. I'll, I'll do it for you for nothing. I'll do it for you. I'll do, I bet you I'll get it done in less than an hour. I'll create the backup files for you. Because you're saying it's taking a day now. I I'm. You can't I'm work exactly tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow's it takes, Sunday. It takes forever. <laughs> so let me help you out. We'll talk know. after. I'm staying the night down here. I'll probably go home and see if it's done tomorrow. But it's the database that I. I can help you. We'll, we'll talk after. I'll help you with that. You said uh, cPanel? cPanel. <coughs> Some kind of cPanel. Okay. So, so uh, cPanel does have a backup system in there. It's not the most friendly system to use. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on who the host is, it can lock <laughs> up to and, or just crash and burn. But cPanel is an option. Sure. Also, with C some hosts, you can't, they will not let you, like you can, you'll get it, get the backup, you have to download it and immediately remove it. They will not let you keep it on the host. Yeah, this is too big in some cases, yeah. Infinite WP. Infinite WP, it's a good one. I actually should add that one to the list. Any others? My husband. 
Your husband? <laughs> he's a nice guy. He's a As nice guy. He's a, you should stay with him. He's a nice guy. I like him too. Volunteering for that backup. Good job. So, and just going back, again, these are all hyperlinks that can take you off to the information about each individual plugin. And then at the bottom, if you uh, want to try your hands at doing it manually, that will walk you through step by step to execute a manual backup. It is not the funnest thing in the world to do. All right. I want to introduce you to something called the Crock-Pot Method. Has anybody ever heard of this? That's good. I just made it up a couple days ago. <laughs> I, was, I, I was hoping I didn't like steal it from somebody. <laughs> what is the joy of using a Crock-Pot to make a meal? What's the joy of it? Set and forget. Set and forget. Yes. Set and forget. In the morning, right, you, you prep your stuff. You throw it in the crock pot, you go to work, then you come home, and you have a meal, right? Set and forget. Now, the recipe book is very limited, <laughs> but there's some creative stuff out there. Set and forget. Why not take the same approach with your backup and restore strategy? Right? Do your prep work. Your prep work is setting up your tool that's going to execute it, right? And then you're going to set and forget it. And the crockpot method could actually be applied to a lot of things that we do with WordPress. Find ways to automate things so you don't have to manage it, right? Crockpot method. So again, the defined approach to creating a successful backup and restore strategy can be broken up in three actions. You have to identify the importance. If you do not understand how important it is to have a backup, and if you're not afraid in case you need one and don't have it, then you're not going to be successful. And you're not going to be protected from financial loss, potentially. You don't have insurance on your site. You have to understand how important this is. Once you understand how important it is, select the tool that's going to work with you. I've told you what I use. I've used it for years. I've physically backed up, restored, migrated sites that are 10 gigabytes or more without a hiccup. I have never, ever, ever, ever had to contact the support department of Draft Plus. Never. Never had a problem. Pro version? Uh, I use a pro version, but the free version is the identical plugin. Pro version just has more options. Pro, the, the pro version allows you to back up remotely to places like Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, and it also does migration. But the free version does a backup, it does one-click restore, it does automated backups before updates, does all the important stuff. So try the free version out. And then the most important action that you need to take in this strategy is to automate the process. Don't manage it. There's way too many things for us to manage every day, right? In our business, in our personal life. Find those things that you can automate. Crockpot method, set and forget. All right, so let's join this movement. Does anybody want to join this movement with me? Okay. Back up before you crack up. Like, can we all educate together? Because I'm going to tell whoever I meet and whoever I talk to about having a backup and restore strategy. I cannot tell you, I've seen people cry. <laughs> I've seen people go out of business. I've seen really bad things happen that breaks my heart. And it sounds cheesy, it sounds foo-foo, but it's true. If you're in a situation where you need a backup file that doesn't exist, you are in a bad place. So be part of this movement with me. Educate the people you know in the community. Educate the new people you meet. And let them know that they have to have a successful backup and restore strategy. All right. Who's got some horror stories? <laughs> Let's get the mic. Come on. Just because someone says, oh, that'll never happen, <laughs> it will. <laughs> We were on site in Hawaii doing a show. We had a three drive RAID system, so we're covered, right? 
This is a high profile show we're doing in the medical industry where we have to document everything that happens. Two of the drugs failed. Oh my God. Shut everything down. We lost all the data. We sent it to the drives to multiple recovery houses, and none of it back. We skated a multi-million dollar lawsuit. So if it can happen, it will. Wow. $1.7 trillion per year is spent on data recovery. That was a million of it. spent a lot of it for no recovery. No problem. Miles got a good one. I do back up every hour on my database now and every day on the files. Miles is about to make us cry. Emails telling me that it backed up just so I know that it happened. It's dangerous. <laughs> Okay, so I do a lot of cleanups uh, for hack websites through WP Fix It. I actually enjoy it, even though some people they actually they're in a panic. Uh, my site's down, has weird stuff going on, and I'm getting pop-ups to porn sites and all sorts of fun stuff. Well, I had this interesting one where by the time I got access to the host and everything, because I needed direct access by that point. Previously, uh, some of the site was showing. By the time I got to clean the files, their WP content folder was missing. They didn't have a backup present. I told the guy, I was like, I need to clean something, and your WP content folder is missing. I looked for it everywhere, and this guy's like, I hope I have a backup. Two days later, he found a backup from a year and a half ago. So I was like, I'll clean that up and restore it. He's like, that's all I can do. He just, he's like, he, he had that where I told him he was panicking. He's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose my site. And he was just determined, I don't even care, whatever I can save by that point. That's a horror story. Yeah. Happy Halloween. I have a good this is great. This is actually the best part right here. I'll go here. I have a good one. Uh, this client of mine didn't have any backups, and we tried to find everywhere, and we couldn't. So we ended up in going to a website called archive.org, and then get like the cache, and also to Google it, Google's cache, to get the page, the content, and rebuild, we rebuild the site from there. Oh man! About like 50 pages, I guess. Oh, Not yeah, that much. You don't get it all back. Yeah. Get some. Most, yeah. yeah. Where do you go? Way back Yeah, archive.org. So, I added a test site to my server and totally forgot about it because I was doing some experiments. So I just threw up, a, yeah, threw up a WordPress site, added a theme that then was outdated, but I had no clue because I totally forgot about it, wasn't managing it. So the site got hacked through the test site on my server, and then my site got hacked. Yep. Cross and I threw up a spammer, I don't know what it was. But I, I did have a backup, but I had to scramble. I didn't know where it was. I wasn't organized with my backup. Very common reason why websites get infected. The dev site stays on the server, and nothing on the dev site ever gets updated. Yeah. I was running a uh, mortgage bank where we also had a mortgage broker in the office at the same time. And there were probably about 10 or 15 people working there. And we came in one morning, and it's from three offices over, somebody had tunneled through the building, oh. uh, through the walls, and removed all of our computer equipment. Oh. That's why you said theft earlier. Yeah, yeah. It was gone. So you had no, you had no backup off-site. <laughs> That's painful. Off-site pickup. Okay, yeah, uh, I, I mean, I don't really want to give you a prize, but you have the worst story so far. <laughs> Actually, we've got a million dollars here, but you, you probably no, got a million. No, uh, it was a, it was everybody, you know, it was, I bet it. You know, yeah. yeah, you get the prize. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Sorry. Anybody else? Any other horror stories? Well, I'll just make it quick. I've had two clients who've been ransomed. Ransomware. Yeah. So uh, luckily the hosts that I had them on uh, backed up every day, so it wasn't a big deal. But uh, this is not just a conversation for WordPress, this is life, people. With who just got hacked? That big hack? That I mean, Target. You know, it's, 
everything needs to be done. Is that? I have one. All right. Am I allowed? Yeah, of course. <laughs> no. No, sit down. So, okay, I'll sit down and tell them. No. <laughs> so it's, uh, uh, I'm supporting your point because we, I work for a university and our websites are backed up on the same system as student data. So it's a large enterprise backup, off-site duplication, good stuff. However, something stupid that you can do that just makes it happen. We have a service now, for reasons I won't get into, we have 750 or so individual installs of WordPress, which is insanity. So we have a deployment tool that pushes our code out to all these sites. Someone made a bad commit that removed the git ignore from the oh wp content folder. So, and if you don't have a file in a folder, git treats it as empty. And so the deployment service just sees this as delete. So this ran, and we have we have some sites on there that have been there since you know WordPress version two, and it was something like seven and a half terabytes wow. of content, and that includes like Gravity Forms entries, like anything that's stored in WP content, all gone. Hmm. So we were like we were able to restore it, but it's just a good example of like one silly thing that you don't think of or don't consider, and it's all gone. Yeah, the, you're definitely part of the movement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other, the other important thing too is also to test your backup. You know, restore often. Yeah. You know, yeah. One thing I didn't talk about, which isn't important, and you made me think of it right now, is redundancy, right? Yeah. Like your backup should be redundant. So a lot of people will back up to the server, but if that server has problems, then your backup's gone and your site's gone, right? So be redundant. You know, backup Off offline. Site. Backup off-site. You know, Dropbox is a great place. Google, but be redundant. You know, how important is your site to you? It sounds like you have a completely redundant system. There's backups like, there's get backups, like get backups. three servers, and then there's one like way off-site, and then one in another country. Right. right. Like redundancy is important as well. Yeah, sure, sure. Nice. Question about like, your story. If your site is it does get hacked or it's just completely unusable, what exactly do you do? And you've got this, you've got this backup that's part of this current site. So what are the two things that make up the heart and the brain of your WordPress site? Yes. Your, your database and your content, right? As long as you have those, you can restore your site. Now, it's not as easy as pressing one button in Updraft Plus because your site is completely inaccessible. Right. So, you, so you can do that through your web hosting control panel, mm -hmm. or you can do it, actually, you can do it through that and using FTP. In some cases, you may be able to ask your hosting company to so restore it for you. Recreate the, the WordPress core and then and then pull in this plugin. It's Correct. These files. Correct. Okay. And I can I can uh, send you a good article that walks you through that if you like. All right, we got one more question. I, I, I think a, I had a simple one here, and that is, you gotta watch. Is that off? It's off. I think it's on. So yeah. you, you need to watch. You know, talk about uh, taking care of things. You need to watch that they're being backed up. I had one client who didn't pay attention and his credit card changed for some reason and he didn't pay enough attention and next thing you know the hosting company vaporized everything and said they couldn't it find any bad. backups yeah, for it. So it led to reason, to reason to not only do your backups but verify. Yeah. Trust but verify. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I get email. Everybody more? backs up yeah. and emails me and tells me. We got one more. We got time for one more. Uh, I don't know who to pick. <laughs> this is a dilemma. Really fast. <laughs> I have a question. question or should we do question or do whatever you want it's fine okay go quickly okay. so I have a site that we had on Updraft Plus we tried to do the one click restore have you ever seen plug-in conflicts with that one click restore that didn't allow that to happen we were my husband was able to restore it but uh, I mean, it's hard for me to uh, to tell you what the issue was without seeing it. No, 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 I know, uh, but have you ever seen that happen? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, but usually the conflict is caused by another plugin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you don't have, do you have any plugins that on a regular basis cause conflicts, those kind of conflicts? Well, backup, backup, uh, Updraft Plus uses the Chrome to to run backup, so if there's something else conflicting with that, it could potentially okay. cause issues. But uh, I mean, I can I can answer some stuff further after if you like. Still five. No, my husband fixed it. We still got five. Yeah. 
A client Your husband that. did that too? <laughs> my husband does everything. He's amazing. He is amazing. <coughs> you don't even Gosh, know. Man. Let me know if you guys break up. Like, I'm, I'm going to snatch him up. No. Him up. <laughs> no, you'll never break up. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I had a client, I designed their site about 15 years ago. They had been adding content to it all that time. Didn't properly back it up. GoDaddy moved the content to a different server. Didn't properly back it up, so oh. they lost everything. Oh. They hired me back to rebuild it. Happy Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious about this updraft plus. Is it back it up only to like a database or does it also back it up to like an XML file also? So the, the backup files it creates, the database itself, it creates a, a SQL file. But the, the content, it creates zip files, right? Okay. And, and Updraft Plus has this really cool process of creating these small zip files, right? And then when you export and re-import, it puts them back together in this big zip file, right? Gotcha. So what you'll find with some of these other backup plugins is if you have tons of uploads, right? Like gigabytes worth of uploads, especially photographer sites or foodie blogs, these backup plugins will crash because they just can't handle that size. Mm -hmm. But Updraft Plus, you can actually set the size yeah. of each zip file. Like and, or something. Yeah, and, it, and it'll back up so if your uploads could be broken up into like 15 zip files. Yeah. And then yeah, you, can, you can set it up so it backs up outside of the WordPress. Yeah. You can, yes. The, the free version, um, there's no off-site options, but the premium version allows you to, to go like anywhere, all the, all the major storage places. Jared, do you know if the free version is uh, incremental? Oh, just it's incremental, yes. yes. The free version, right? Incremental. Yeah, which is yeah. awesome. Both, both of course there's off-site versions. You just have to tell Updraft to FTP it to that server mm -hmm. over there and it takes right. the ones over there and tell FTP, tell it to FTP and back over here. And now the chances of both servers at different providers. Yeah, on the premium version you can do that. No, on the free. On the free, so you can FTP it? Yeah. Okay. I've never done FTP. Usually it's off-site to Google Drive or Dropbox. Because then what happens with FTP, now you're putting it on a server that now you got to back that server up. And then you just run into like an endless backup chain. Well, if, if you're afraid of and have multiple servers at multiple hosts in multiple towns going down at the same time, maybe you're too paranoid. Well, if a service like Dropbox, right, they already have that redundancy plan in place, right? So they, who knows what it is, but I'm sure it's very, very high tech, right? So if you back up just there, you don't have to worry about being redundant. Five and places. one of the other methods I like also is you just tell it to email it. You could email it as and well. And you yeah. email it to, oh, my WP yeah. backup Gmail account. Right. And if it's too large, though, that could. Yeah. Um, for free plugins, I've always recommended back WP up. How could you compare briefly Updraft Plus to back WP up? Because that was one of them. I'm vaguely familiar with it because, like I said, I've been using Updraft Plus for years. Um, what I remember, though, they don't have a restore option. So, so you're only accomplishing half of the strategy. So, but, but that was in my in my list. I think it's a, it's a decent plugin. Yeah. Last one. Because the young lady in the back asked about the content being like, "What do you do?" You talked about manually uploading or whatever. So, just to explain why I'm. My computer is running at home and downloading. <coughs> uh, my hosting. Can we say names of hosting? Sure. Sure. Okay. So I, I, I was with Yahoo and I moved into Cyber. And uh, Yahoo, they, they don't. They're running like PHP four, and they don't do HT access files. So I've got a plugin to do permalinks. It's just. It's crazy. So, yeah, and I don't know anything about WordPress, and it's crazy to me. So, something, I think some, somebody's mentioned something about being hacked. I think I, my site got hacked or got infectious code or something because something was writing temporary write files in my WP content folder. And on the file manager on my host cPanel, I could, I could see all of the folders except WP content. But when I went to the website, it loaded, and it was there, and I could cache, I could clear it, it just wouldn't load it. And when I called uh, Yahoo, the, you know, the nice man from India had no idea why that was happening, because it wouldn't load for him. So I got, a, I got a silver lining for you. 
it finally loaded, and it was like a billion, like a gigawatt full of stuff. It was so, the file was so big, the folder was so big, it was taking so long to look at on the file manager that it just, it couldn't, it, there was so much crap in there from those temporary art files, it just couldn't load it. So real quick, I've got a silver lining for you. Since you're moving to SiteGround, they'll move your site for free. Contact them, they'll take they care of it. They couldn't even get into Google. I had, to, I had to migrate it myself to SiteGround. I had to, and, and I lost everything on that site. I had to go into the WordPress dashboard and do the export thing and build it and do the import and none of the media copy, it, it was just, well, we'll Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Jared.